I think that if the UK decides to leave on the on the 23rd, we'll certainly get into a very unstable territory, especially for the financial architecture of the whole European Union, that symbiotic, corrupt, uh, deregulated, but at the same time rigidly regulated in favor, rigged more, um, mostly in favor of, of uh, the financial elites and the financial oligarchy in this continent. That architecture, I think, is going to be to be shaken. Uh, in a very unforeseeable manner. Certainly there will be incertitude and certainly that will open new political scenarios. My fear, and I can certainly not defend the actual, the actual workings and the actual architecture of the European Union, my fear is that that in uncertainty uh, will open political spaces that will be more prone to, a, let's say, a retreat into a xenophobic, racist, right-wing rhetoric about sovereignty and so forth, a discourse of fear, a discourse of inner retreat, a discourse of hatred or mistrust of the other, rather than being opening a space for a, for a progressive humanist, if you want, alliance uh, against austerity. So that this European Union is not working in favor of the people is clear. How to build a coalition and an alternative that is able to, to give that battle is a, different, is a different manner, a different question. And I don't think that a leave vote in the UK will be the most conducive element for that better scenario for the popular democratic forces in the continent. We were enthusiastic about the election of, of Jeremy Corbyn in the, in the Labour primaries because I think it was a highly important and very symbolic um, illustration of a tension that, is, uh, that can be found in every single social democratic party in Europe. These social democratic parties after the 90s embraced following the Labour Party, so I think that's part of the symbolic element of it too, uh, embraced these neoliberal policies, then the austerity paradigm, and have become uh, nothing short of the gentle face of the grand coalitions that are basically dismantling the welfare state, whatever remains of it in European societies. There are important sectors within these parties, and especially among their electorates, that do not understand this move and that are putting pressure for these parties to return to a basic commitment with the conditions of possibility of their own discourse, defending social rights, defending the material dignity in the existence of, of, their, of their citizens. I, I think that the victory of Corbyn in the primaries, even though there are huge problems right now in, uh, for him to be able to do his work within the party, uh, was, was very, sent a very powerful message to those parties uh, and opened a political space for the regeneration of leadership in these parties. And we know that in order to build a correlation of forces that is able to actually stand the ground and, and fight austerity politics, we will need these parties to turn towards the, the side of basically social democratic decency, nothing more than that. I think that we are opening a new political space in Spain, where Podemos is certainly the main vector, the, 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 let's say the vector that, that is uh, in the head of, of this very plural, very heterodox uh, body, this immense um, space where a lot of people can fit in. So there's been a huge debate about the transversality and this need to gather social majorities uh, instead of beginning by setting a very explicit and clear and closed identity and then asking people to come to join you. We have gone where the people, uh, where the people is. And I, I think that paradoxically, the, let's say the inclusion within that space of a clearly identified left subject um, can be, instead of, um, let's say, contradicting that, that message of transversality, can be the better proof, the best proof, that actually within that space, a lot of different identities can be welcomed, a lot of different identities can find their own, their own space. And I think that in order to be able to build that correlation of forces to give this battle to, to defend democracy, basically, we will need be a, to be able to guarantee that all these people coming from very different traditions, from voting different political options, from not being interested at all in politics, uh, that they feel at home 
uh, within this broad political space is a key element and is essential. Of course, it's not going to be easy, but I believe that uh, that is the only strategic option that can that can allow us to win to win not only the elections but to transform uh, our social reality and with all the obstacles and contradictions and problems and tensions that there will be i think that that is certainly the direction we have to move towards not building one big organization including everyone but keeping alive this space that podemos uh, let's say directs uh, and that can be the gathering space for, for all the democratic forces.